Hello and welcome to this short YouTube video on how to manage your SOLIDWORKS simulation result files inside of SOLIDWORKS Enterprise PDM. So I'm going to start by simply creating a new part. I'll use one of my uh, part templates inside one of my vaults and I can directly choose where I want to save the file, in this case a simulations folder. Uh, you can see I've got automatically numbered uh, files there and I'll just go ahead and create. So just for this video I'm going to create a very uh, very simple uh, example there so I'll just start sketching on the front plane and just sketch some very simple geometry a simple uh, block with the hole in it add some dimensions and just sketch a circle and dimension to finish off and we'll go ahead and extrude that for 10 millimeters thickness. All right, so let's go ahead and we'll add a material. I'm just going to specify a common steel day AISI 304. All right, so the CAD design is complete. We can now go into our simulation. So I'll just create a new static study. And what I'm doing here is uh, giving the study a a unique name, so we'll call this here initial stress analysis. This is because the stress uh, analysis result file will be put into the EPDM vault and it should have a unique name uh, as well. So we can then add a fixture, I'm just going to fix that face there so it will be uh, unable to move and I'm just going to add a tensile load to the other end, so we'll just add a load there, reverse the direction so it's a tensile load and we'll just say for this initial one just make it 10,000 newtons. And that's all I need to do. So I'm just going to mesh the model. So we'll divide it up into uh, hundreds of finite elements. And then we'll run it to see what the results are like. So run it. SOLIDWORKS, we know, uses some of the fastest solvers in the business. Um, and we get that there. And of course, we can animate it to see what's going on. So you can see clearly the tensile force stretching the plate there. All right, so that's all well and good. So if we just save that now. So what I want to do is I now want to check this document into the vault. So I can just check it in there. And you can clearly see it's picked up the CWR file as a reference or the result file. And I can add comments as well. So I'm just going to say initial stress analysis, force of 1000 newtons. Oh, pardon my spelling there. And I'll check that in. And what's that going to do? Well, I'll check the file in so that the EPDM vault has now a record of it. And after that, if I just look at the file inside of Windows Explorer. So I'll just open up a Explorer window. Just navigate to my vault. And we can see the part file and its associated result file. You can add data cards for it. And if we just take a look at the history, you can see the versions, who it was created by, and you can see that comment there. So you're always able to keep track of what's happening with your files, when it was done, who it was done by. So let's edit this now. So what we'll do is we'll just um, uh, check out the file again so we can work on it. Again, with the checkout, uh, you can see we can choose to check out the uh, result file as well because it's all kept together by SOLIDWORKS. So what I'll do is I'll just edit the force. Let's say we want to test it with a much larger force. So I'm just going to make keep things simple, uh, increase the force to 100,000 newtons. And let's just run the study again. Takes a couple of seconds. You can see much larger stresses now, obviously, above the yield strength there uh, as well. So I'm just going to check my uh, part in again. And we can see newer versions of both files, and we can add another comment uh, as well. So we can say increase force to 100,000 newtons rather than the 10,000 we had initially. And by doing this, we're just adding more and more sort of richness to the history um, of the file there. So again, if we just uh, navigate to that in Windows Explorer, we can take a look at the file there, and we can see if we take a look at the history, uh, we can see both sort of comments there. So you have much greater sort of traceability over your file. So that's how you can manage your simulation data effectively using SOLIDWORKS Enterprise PDM. If you have any questions, please do let me know. Thank you.